Supernatic Gal Vaughn here with Supernatic Storytime, ready to read you another story tonight as you get ready for bedtime. And so today I get to read to you a letter to my teacher. And again, super thankful to my friend, Miss Gomez, who's a principal down in Colton in Southern California, who sent us all these really great books. So again, we just really want to say thank you uh, for her sharing those books with us because we get to rejoice and uh, really be able to read and learn about all the diversity in our country and look at beautiful books of children all over. And so today I get to read you a letter to my teacher. So thanks for joining us today just before you go to bed. So we'll be sending our, our books out to you um, every evening so you can enjoy uh, just before you close your eyes. So thanks for being here. Hola mi comunidad de Greenfield. Soy Superintendente Galván del Distrito Escolar de Greenfield. Lista para leer otra historia con ustedes. Y hoy otra vez doy gracias a mi amiga, una directora en eh, el sur de California. Se llama a señora Gómez y muchas gracias porque ella mandó tantos libros a nosotros para poder disfrutar juntos y este día voy a leer una carta a mi maestra. So ustedes van a poder um, recordar los días de cuando eran uh, con, con su maestra, cuando eran jóvenes si son los papás y los niños a, ahora con sus maestros en las clases con nosotros. So gracias por acompañarnos hoy. So thanks for joining us again. A letter to my teacher. This is uh, written by Deborah Hopkins and it's pictures by Nancy Carpenter. So here we go. We are ready to read together. So cuddle up, hope you're ready. As you close your eyes, we're gonna read to you. So here we go. Dear teacher, whenever I had something to tell you, I tugged on your shirt and whispered in your ear, this time I'm writing a letter. I hope you remember me I was the one who marched to school that very first day, splashing through every puddle that I could find. I wrote a bright yellow raincoat and a dark stormy frown because for me, school meant sitting still and listening. Two things I wasn't very good at. I stood there honoring and dripping, just sure I was gonna get into trouble, but instead, you smiled at me. Good morning, look at you, standing there like Mary Kinsley, just back from canoeing up the Ogie River. <gasps> Who, I said, where? Well, Mary Kinsley, the fearless explorer, you explained to me. Someday, we're gonna read about her and crocodiles. Now get out that mop, crocodiles. After taking attendance, you made a big announcement. Welcome! This year, we will be planting the first ever second grade garden. It will be our great experiment. Yay! We get to dig in the mud, I shouted. True, she said, but first we read about plants. We'll use math to measure the plot and we'll write about our garden. The plan, reading, math, and writing. I was better at running and jumping, but okay. The next week, we visited the creek behind our school to learn about plants and water. When you weren't watching, I started to hop on the rocks. Right in the middle, I got stuck. Look at me, I'm Mary, what's her name? I hollered trying to sound brave. Watch out, crocodiles, you called back. Then you rushed to rescue me. On the way back, you held my hand and never told anyone how much I was shaking. All fall, I tried hard to sit still. Right before Thanksgiving vacation, you asked me who wanted to make the, house, the Mouse Brothers home. Oh, me, pick me, I shouted. Taking the Mouse Brothers, they have a, a class pet. But while I was busy eating turkey, my cat, Lucy, ate one of the brothers. I bought a replacement mouse, except I just couldn't tell you. One day when we were cleaning their cage, you called me over to your desk and told me that we might have to change the brother's name to Ma and Pa Mouse. You knew the whole time, I said. Laughing, you said. 
Might as well get used to it. Teachers know everything. When winter came, the reading corner became our secret garden of stories. On Friday afternoons, we all curled up in the lap, oh, in the heap to listen to her. Just like our new litter of mice. Oh, they have babies. I loved it when you read to us and always begged for more, but I hated being called on to read out loud because I kept tripping over the words. Once, right before my turn, I yelled, raise your hand if you want to go home. Another time I clutched my throat and said, uh oh, I just lost my voice because I didn't want to read. Nothing fooled you though. You called me to your desk and you asked, when we make our garden, do you think the seeds will grow right away? No, I said, everyone knows they need time and sun and water. Well, she looked at me and she said, learning to read takes time too. Now, I think you have it. I nodded, Lucy, the one who likes mice. I'd like to read to Lucy every day, she suggested. It might keep her out of trouble too. I giggled, maybe I'll read a story about Puss in Boots to my mouse. Sounds good. I practiced hard and you gave me extra help too. And one day you bought me a special book. I met a real author and he autographed it just for you. I looked at the cover and sounded out the words. Wow, it's about her, that explorer, the one you told me about, Mary Kingsley. You smiled. Next week, you can share it with the class. In March, we explored our town. We went on a field trip to an old house. It was full of history and secret stairways. When I slipped away to look for hidden treasures in the root cellar, you and the whole class had to trudge down the old steps to find me. I think even you lost your patience a little bit. Exasperating was the word you used. I remember because that night my mom helped me look it up in the dictionary because we didn't know what you meant. The day you bought, uh, brought in the seeds for us to choose, I tugged on your shirt. Can we plant this kind? The package says early spring. We can have bright red radishes in just a few weeks. Good reading and great idea, she said. Thanks uh, to the math games we played, measuring our garden was really easy. At last, we turned over the soil and we were ready to plant. I was radish crew chief and read out the directions all by myself. All spring we weeded and we watered and we kept our garden journals too. On the Friday before summer vacation, we wrote out invitations to every class to come and enjoy the salad we had grown all by ourselves. Splendid spinach, said the principal. It's because of the worms, I explained. The worms helped keep the soil fertile. I didn't know how to say thank you. So on the last day, I gave you a present. It was a memory quilt. I'd measured squares on paper and made the story of our year in each one. The reading corner, worms in our compost, the magnificent mouse family, and best of all, a picture of you and me. You looked at the quilt a long time. Then you held it up for everyone to see. Thank you. Now I'll never forget you all and the year of the second grade garden. Me either. I promised, and I never have forgot that year. For a long time now, I've been wanting to write you and to tell you that even though I didn't always listen, I know I was exasperating. Second grade really was my best year ever. So I guess you won't be too surprised to hear that I still like to stomp through creeks I like to dig in the garden, and even more, I like to read out loud to the mouse and my cat. Most of all, I wanna tell you that I'm about to start my first job. 
And tomorrow morning when I go to work, I'll think about everything you helped me explore and try my best to be just like you. Thank you for being my teacher, your student. Oh, that was such a beautiful book. And on the back it says, Dear Teacher, for a long time now I've been wanting to write you to tell you that second grade really was the best year ever. Such a cool story. So this is your opportunity before you go to sleep to remember tomorrow to say thank you to your teacher for doing all the things that they do to make sure that you feel included in your class. This teacher really made this little girl feel really special. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Superintendent Galvan with the Greenfield Union School District. So happy to read you a story uh, for bedtime every night. So sending a great big bear hug from our family to yours.